Addison's disease, also called adrenal insufficiency, is an uncommon disorder that occurs when your body doesn't produce enough of certain hormones. In Addison's disease, your adrenal glands, located just above your kidneys, produce too little cortisol and, often, too little aldosterone. An issue with the adrenal glands themselves causes the majority of cases of Addison's disease, or primary adrenal insufficiency. 70% of Addison's disease is caused by autoimmune conditions. This happens when the immune system of the body accidentally targets the adrenal glands. The outer layer of the glands is destroyed by an autoimmune attack. The adrenal glands can get damaged by persistent infections, including tuberculosis, HIV, and various fungi. Addison's disease can also be brought on by cancer cells that have traveled to the adrenal glands from other regions of the body. Although it is uncommon, a bacterial infection can harm the adrenal glands. The problems with the pituitary gland or the hypothalamus, both of which are found in the middle of the brain, can produce secondary adrenal insufficiency, which affects the adrenal glands, or tertiary insufficiency, which affects the adrenal glands. These glands create hormones that function as a switch to regulate the release of hormones throughout the body. The switch that activates the adrenal glands production of cortisol is a hormone called ACTH, produced in the pituitary. The adrenal glands remain in the off position if ACTH levels are too low. The incorrect or prolonged usage of steroid hormones like prednisone is another factor in secondary adrenal insufficiency. Pituitary tumors and damage to the pituitary gland from surgery or radiation are less frequent causes. The incorrect or chronic use of steroid hormones, such as prednisone, is a frequent cause of tertiary insufficiency. Now, let's have a look at signs and symptoms of adrenal insufficiency. Look at this image, here we see that there is dark pigmentation on skin. Addison disease is classically seen with hyperpigmentation due to ACTH melanogenesis. Melanogenesis by definition is the production of the melanin pigments, which cause the dark pigmentation. This discoloration most commonly occurs near scars, by skin creases such as the knuckles, and on the mucous membranes such as the gums. Also, hyperpigmentation represents an accentuation of normal pigmentation in the hand of a patient with Addison's disease on left. For comparison, the hand of a normal individual, matched for ethnic pigmentation, is shown on the right. Both of your adrenal glands, which are located on top of your kidneys, become damaged in Addison's disease. Addison's disease can develop suddenly or gradually. Typically, the symptoms of adrenal insufficiency are low blood pressure, low blood sugar, weight loss, loss of appetite, muscle loss, fatigue, and intolerance. Diagnosis of patient with Addison's disease in a hospital or clinic is frequently done by routine blood tests. Additionally, as a symptom of chronic Addison's disease, we need to look for hyperpigmentation, or darkening, of the skin or gums. Once it's suspected, blood tests including, complete blood count, serum electrolytes, renal function tests and absolute eosinophil count shall be obtained. Anemia that is iron deficiency in most cases, low sodium or high potassium levels on electrolytes, or a high amount of eosinophils are all indicators of Addison's disease. The most definitive way to diagnose Addison's is to measure hormone levels in the blood before and after giving ACTH. Cortisol secretion from the adrenal glands is often increased by the brain hormone ACTH. Due to the adrenal glands' inability to respond to ACTH stimulation, cortisol levels are kept low in people with Addison's disease. If there is adrenal insufficiency, measuring cortisol and ACTH levels can assist in identifying whether the adrenal glands or brain are the issue. A CT scan of the adrenal glands can be used as part of the examination of Addison's disease to check for infection, malignancy, or bleeding in the glands. Since tuberculosis accounts for up to 20% of cases, a test for the disease may also be performed. Because the adrenal glands' normal hormone production is impaired in Addison's disease, those hormones can be replaced. A steroid hormone called hydrocortisone, which can be taken once or twice daily, can be used for this. Fludrocortisone acetate, a synthetic steroid that is taken orally once per day, can be used to substitute aldosterone if necessary. During times of stress, infection, surgery, or injury, these medications might need to be increased. Almost always, treatment is a total success. People with Addison's disease can live full, healthy lives after receiving treatment.
A medical alert bracelet and emergency ID card should be kept on you at all times. Additionally, you ought to have some medicine on hand at the office or school. Even one dose missed can be harmful. Even before an Addison's disease diagnosis is confirmed, doctors may provide injections of salt, fluids, and glucocorticoids for patients who may be experiencing an Addisonian crisis. Now, to learn more about Addisonian crisis, please watch the next video. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and support us to learn more, thank you.